Hey, Melissa. <clears throat> Just going to wait for a couple more people to come in. How's everyone doing? Today's a bit of a different one. Hey, Trace, how are you? I'm really good. I'm really, 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 really good. Today's a bit of a different one because we are having a slumber party. True crime, question time, bit of gossip, a bit of what everyone and anyone feels like today. It is open discussion and this live will be staying up. Charlie rode a pony today. That's so good. That's so fun. I'm so excited for today's live, guys. I don't know if this is a good time to go live. I have a bit of a sore throat, just so people know. So we can talk about whatever anyone wants today, which is exciting. Yeah, I'm a little stuffy, but I'm I'm okay. No need to stress. People out here got bigger fish to worry about. I'll be fine. It's just really like cold here in Australia. <clears throat> I'm glad, Trace. How's Tom Tracy? How's things going? How are your daughters and everything? So it's autumn here in Australia, but because I live in the in the country, it's like even colder than what it is in like metro metro area. Hey Marissa, how are you? Oh, wow, that is so good. Yeah, I know, I know. Like cold weather is my favourite, even though it makes me sick. I can't stand it. I'm really, really, really good. I'm so good. Hey, Tom, how are you? Long time no see. Just got back and sat in a week's holiday. That is so amazing. I love that. Are you guys going to head to some bookstores and stuff? Oh, thanks, Marissa. I had a lot of fun filming that, actually. That was really fun. That was so much fun. So today's video is going to be a live event. Look at me acting like I'm something important out here on the tubes. Uh, it's a live event where we're going to be talking about, um, you guys can ask me questions about true crime cases, your theories on true crime cases, what rabbit holes you guys like. Um, and no slumber party is complete without a bit of gossip. So we can talk about whatever the fuck you want. Oh, my God, that's so shit, Trace. I love Disney conspiracy theories. Me too. Maybe my channel should just be all Disney and all conspiracy theories. Oh. 
Hitler conspiracy. I've never heard that one. I was going to do a video and like um, do a video on um, explaining Pizzagate. Explaining Pizzagate and another one I was going to do. Like I just like I'm so vibing conspiracy theories right now. Yeah, I know so much about Disney. It's kind of messed up. <laughs> What is that T M Y? What's that mean? Oh, you're, you're talking to Trace. <laughs> My bad. Is the lighting okay, or should I pop my ring light on? Because I can do that. Yeah, like I was gonna do one on Pizza Gay. I was gonna do one on the fucking the Tom Hanks conspiracy, um, so on and so forth. Oh, yep, 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 where, where he actually didn't die. Yeah, I have heard that one. Went to grade school in Florida and had a lot of friends that worked there, so I learned a lot. That's incredible. I love that. So, guys. What do you want to know? What's good? What do we want to talk about at our slumber party today, guys? Yeah, like I see that's the thing. Like I want to do so many of those on my channel, so many, because I find them so incredibly interesting. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Uh, yeah, my, my hand's fine. It's just... um. I have um, carpal tunnel uh, and arthritis, and because of the change in weather, my wrist is really killing me. Oh, my God, talk about the new UFO stuff. Like, that's the thing. I want to talk about all of it. I want to talk about all that stuff. Like, I was going to do a whole week of um, just conspiracy theories, but I feel like maybe some of my subscribers won't be so interested in that sort of stuff, and I just want to make sure everyone. Yeah, I know. I heard that one about Avril Lavigne, but that was unfortunately as as cool as it is, was debunked. That was a rumor that was actually started by a Brazilian blog and um like a Twitter a Twitter thread. Yeah, yeah, it will, it will. Like I um I keep it on an hour or so a day since the weather's changed. My knees having the same the same. The same issue. Amelia Earhart. Yeah, I want to talk about There's so much that I want to talk about, but, like, I'm on the fence about the whole um, – um, because I want to do true crime because I love me true crime, but at the moment I'm, like, so deep. I mean, at the moment, since I was a child. My parents are big conspiracy theorists, uh, especially my father. Uh, he was a big conspiracy theorist. So I, I like, I'm all, I, I'm all about them. Not that I believe them, but I'm all about talking about them and learning about them and stuff like that. Oh, my hand is killing me. Yeah, yeah, Michelle, the climate kills me, like, and especially because I'm not used to how cold it gets out here, like, it's minus one or two degrees here in Australia, it just kills me, absolutely kills me, um, I, so, what's your favorite conspiracy theory, so my favorite one, right, there's so many, but one of them is actually, so, you know, Elisa Lam, um, she died at the, um, um, at the Cecil Hotel, um, there is actually a conspiracy theory that that entire thing is made up because there is a, um, what's I'm going to call it, a, um, yes, I do, I am familiar with Gabby Hanna, so so tell me about that sort of stuff. Um, but 
there's a conspiracy that there was a plague or something. I don't know if I'm getting that right. Um, the plague. It was or um, and it was called the a lamb Elisa or something like that. And they created it to actually kill off um, homeless people on skid uh, skid row and stuff like that. So it's like, oh my god. <laughs> Oh, my hand. Uh, do you have any creatures like Bigfoot or Loch Ness Monster in Australia? Not that I know of. So I haven't, ex like, I haven't heard about any. Um, we had our joke one, which was a drop bear. <laughs> but I haven't heard of any other ones that we have in Australia. Um, like, we don't even have those sort of theories about, like, skinwalkers and stuff, even though I tell my kids that if they don't behave that they're skinwalkers and stuff, but <laughs> I don't think we have any. <clears throat> hey, cool story. How are you? Um, John Titer one. Can you give me a brief on that? Gabby Hannah kind of fakes something very reminiscent of a breakdown to promote a single and during all during mental health awareness of all months. Wow. I haven't looked that much into it about Gabby Hanna. Um, I did do a video on Gabby Hanna, but it was more talking about the ugly side of mental health. Oh, the time traveler where he is that the one where he wrote on when the internet started, he wrote all this stuff and like predicted a whole bunch of stuff. Is that the one that everyone's talking about? Thanks for telling me how to pronounce it a bit, a bit better, Tom. I appreciate that. But it upsets me a lot as someone who's mental health issues, who's had mental health issues uh, from a young age. I think that you would really appreciate my video. Um, appreciate my video on, on Gabby Hanna um, then because – I really kind of like side with her in a way and talk about the ugly side of mental health. So that's something that you might see. A coast to coast. I know coast to coast. My sister, oh, my God, my I have a sister who's 13 years older than me and she listens to coast to coast all the time. Do Someone asked me, because um, we're talking about conspiracy theories and stuff, someone asked me if we have... Um, a creature in Australia that's kind of like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster or anything like that. Do we have anything like that in Australia? No. I, I just said we had our, like, our, our joke drop there. Yeah. That? <laughs> but that's it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we don't have anything like that. Have you guys heard the theory that um, Donald Trump's son is a time traveller? Wow, Tom, that is so cool. I love that. So his youngest son, his youngest son, what what is um Donald Trump's son's name? The the young fella. I don't know. Can't remember. I can't remember. Do you remember the kind of conspiracy theory that I'm talking about, though? That he's that he's a time traveler, and he's um, oh, and he like wrote a book on all this stuff. Like, oh, it's so hard to explain. I'm gonna have to do a video on it because it was so like, wow. <laughs> Lol. Anyone claiming to be a time traveler, I have some real expectations of them. <laughs> yes, exactly. Alternate universes and shit like that. And do you know that um, you guys have heard about the um, the Tesla thing? Is it Tesla? Tulsa, okay. Tesla. Tesla, yeah. How 
someone related or knowing related to Donald Trump actually was in charge of when Tesla died going through all of his work and deciding there was nothing of substance and keeping it. And that's why, like, Donald Trump and his, like, family, like, know all this stuff and do all this hectic stuff or whatever. But, yeah. I, I Like, that's the thing. Disclaimer here, friends. I don't know none of this shit's true. I just talk about it because I find it interesting. You know what I want is all conspiracies that are pro- planned out to be proven true. There's so many, actually. There's so many. Baron, Baron, that's his name, I think. Byron, Baron, Byron. That makes me think of Byron Bay. Hey, what have I stumbled into? All oh, some craziness. We all got our tinfoil hats on today. <laughs> Oh, we got flat earthers. I could do a video on that where all their fucking proof comes from. Their proof makes no sense. Tesla things ever heard of, I can't say that word, incident. No, I haven't, Tom. Can you fill us in? If you feel like it. If you can't be fucked, don't blame you. (laughs) See, I want to talk about all this stuff, guys. I want to talk about it. Yeah, don't go too deep on me, Tom. I've just started to have me coffee. It's only, um, what time is it, babe? 8.30? Yeah. It's only 8.30 here in Australia. Do you guys want to say hi to Jose? Hi. (laughs) Poor bugger. Yeah, Mandela effects. Uh, I talk about Mandela effects in my um, video thing. Hey, Sassy, how are ya? Good conspiracy, JonBenet was never. She is now Katy Perry. Oh, my God, yeah, I've heard that. Have you heard the one about Anne Hathaway, guys? Have you heard that one? So our quarantine has ended uh, out in regional Victoria, So, um, but metro Victoria, so more city area. Um, they are in for another seven days. It's been confirmed that we had the more of the, what is it? The. <laughs> You're telling the story, though. <laughs> but what strain is it? Indian. The Indian. So it was, yeah. The Indian and UK or? No, the Indian strain. Okay. The UK have as well. Okay. So it's been confirmed that we have the Indian strain now here in it Australia. Travels faster. And in Victor- in Victoria. some shit. Um, but we are on different regulations where we are not in lockdown, but it's more of a wear masks, only go out if you have to, so on and so forth. We've got a lot of more screening and stuff like that. My mum just had to be tested for COVID yesterday, but she came back negative. So, yeah. Who is the other pop singer, Sassy Elmo? Because that would be really interesting. But the Anne Hathaway one, you guys have to hear it. It's so crazy. In Serbia, some say that ash- an asteroid. Others say it's a Tesla experiment gone bad. Allegedly product producted. Where's my glasses? Produce spores that dead flesh. Tom, you're so smart. Yeah, it's 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 no fun. Like it's really it's really 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 shit. But I don't feel that terrible for me where I am. I kind of feel more terrible for like um Jess, my best friend because she's actually in one of the biggest hot spots in Melbourne at the moment. 
like there was um, several different ones where um, buses that went past her were two hotspots. Um, her local pharmacy is one. Her local supermarket is another. Um, so that makes me feel feel really, really bad for Jess. So I don't want to complain about my situation. I kind of feel bad for those in, like, Melbourne, Melbourne. Oh, my God, Illuminati shit. Oh, my God. I could talk about that shit for days, mate. Oh, my God, Trace, I agree. He so does. Yeah, Melissa, it's it's, it's crappy. Yeah, it, it is crappy. If you've ever seen the video for all night for all nightmare long by Metallica, I saw Metallica live. They were so good. Yeah, I um, uh, let me read that. If you've ever seen the video all from all nightmare long by Metallica, that's all about. That's what it's all about. That's how I learned about it. Wow. See, I know so much about Illuminati too. Like, I've watched. Okay, here's how we're gonna get crazy, guys. People are gonna people are gonna be like, "This girl, this girl is bananas." Have you guys heard the conspiracy that a lot of people in? Is there a reason you're sitting on my computer, dog? Out of here, boy. Come on, cook it off. Off my computer, please. Off out. Um. About some celebrities and some celebrities' kids are not actually the gender that they are. Does that make any sense? Do you guys feel like I should do more content on that sort of stuff? Like, because I love that shit. If you've never listened to your wrong about podcast, I think you'd like it. Yes. Yeah, Tom, tell us everything. Tell us everything. As long as everyone has this like disclaimer that we're not we're not crazy folk, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There was actually a lady on YouTube. I don't can't remember what her channel was called. My sister used to watch it. I believe in the, how do you say that Abercrombie word? Adrenochrome. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm so terrible with pronouncing things. Yeah, there was a lady on YouTube that would actually study the, the human form of like, um, she's done it about a lot of, um, like even Gigi Hadid and stuff. Like I'm not saying she's right. I'm not saying it's a good video to do. I'm just saying it's it's interesting. But she actually talks about their bone structure and things like that and says that they transition or change their gender because it's something about being a sacrifice to uh, the Illuminati in Hollywood. It's bananas. <clears throat> oh, well, yeah, I'm going to have to check out that podcast then. I really am going to have to check it out. But that's the thing. I won't do these videos seriously because I don't know how to do anything seriously. I do believe it's a real thing. My own theory about Illuminati is, is a what, not who, a philosophy, not a group of people where a group collects the money and power for their own means above the law as opposed to service. Oh, Tom, I like that. Do you know what, Tom, if I start doing a lot of conspiracy theory things and stuff like that and start doing more of a panel sort of thing, I would so love to have you and Michelle on. Like that would just make my day. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Yeah, but all of this stuff I find so interesting and I would just like, 
I would be so, I, I just couldn't be serious about it though like you'd still get my humor and me not pronouncing words properly and just having a laugh with it and my sister is a huge conspiracy theorist like she like, I don't speak to my sister anymore. I haven't spoken to my sister in quite a few years. But um, oh, we've talked here and there, but me and my sister were just two very different people. She's a very, very serious person. How would you say my sister is, like, 100% like? Bananas. <laughs> right, so says my sister's bananas. But my sister is very, very serious, so we don't spend – we don't – we're very different. I don't find anything serious. Um but a lot of conspiracy theory stuff, like my sister and I would go down that rabbit hole together. Like the whole sock thing with Tom Hanks on on um, Instagram. Um, Anne Hathaway is actually the wife of Shakespeare, stating that Shakespeare had said, if I am famous in this lifetime, you can be famous in the next. And that is why she's a, um, you know, Famous fucking whatever, you know what I mean? Also uh, would love to do one on the U.S. something up such as Rex 84. See, tell me all this stuff because I want to learn about more of this American stuff. In Australia, I am bothered about what happens here. Like it's not interesting. Do you know what I mean? Like I find it so interesting all this stuff like from from America and from the UK and Russia and Japan like Jose and I were talking about that that um that case in Japan and we want to do a podcast on it what's it babe yeah Miyazawa yeah Miyazawa yeah Miyazawa the Miyazawa family it's 20 odd years mm. and it's um not it's still not solved and that is a crazy case, especially when you find out a whole bunch of different shit. You know what I mean? Well, if there's any history conspiracies that you want to confirm. All right. Another panel. You coming. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sunshinery, how are you? If one of my mods could link their channel uh, in the um, chat for me because I want everyone to subscribe to them because they're so lovely and they're so lovely to me and I really appreciate it. <clears throat> FEMA camps. I want to learn more about this stuff, Tom. Do we trust Google? Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing conspiracy theories and stuff like that for this is basically our live version of a slumber party. So whatever true crime, conspiracy theory, alien, gossip, whatever you want to talk about, open, open, um, open mic, so to speak. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, there's so much stuff like um, what's another conspiracy theory? What's another conspiracy theory that we enjoy, baby? I did talk about Bohemian Grove in my 18 true crime conspiracy theory video. Um, what's another conspiracy theory, Tonkin? I don't know. Jose just woke up and he's like, why are you talking to me, girl? Yeah, there's so many. There are so many. And I just, I don't know, I just want to do videos after video after video. Michelle said hi, baby. Hello. Yeah, Bohemian Grove is creepy. 
Part of me doesn't know what to believe about that as well, though. Has anyone seen the documentary on the um, on the the family? But it's some sort of cult. Ah, oh, Brittany Murphy. I believe Brittany Murphy's mum was responsible for the death of her and her husband, and I think it was financially motivated. Yeah, so this is an iced almond caramel latte. Even though I'm not vegan anymore, I still don't drink milk. I just couldn't couldn't do it. Yeah, like I want to do that as well. If I'm alone in this, it's okay. I don't believe in conspiracies. I mean, they make good reading because some are so crazy you can't make sense no matter how much you try. That's a thing, Sassy Elmo. You know, I feel like some of them are like that. Some of them are. It's just a really good way. Um, It's a really cool way to... I don't know, pass the time, I guess. Pass the time. Just interesting to talk about, you know. I believe everything started with a conspiracy theory, especially when everyone was talking about, like, um, the Amelia Earhart stuff and that was a conspiracy and then it turned out to be true, you know. Can't dismiss, not everything is 100%. Not all black and white, but that's fair. Lenore, how are you? <clears throat> yeah, I'm I'm cool with it. If someone can just link that for me, that would be amazing. Yeah, like it's just a bit of fun. <coughs> just link their channel for me. Just link their channel for me. It's almost like that 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 sort of thing like sometimes things aren't as the most logical answer is the answer. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. That is where I that is 125% where I where I come from. I love it. Yeah, like I love that shit. I find it so fun. Hey Betty, how are you? Yeah, there's like so many different ones that I just want to talk about. It gets a little tricky sometimes with trying to figure out which is good, which is not good, like like to talk about. When I say good, I feel like I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Like when it comes to the uh, QAnon or Akon, <laughs> Akon <laughs> um, stuff, like I want to talk about it, but I also don't want to set off anything about um what's the word I'm looking for like politics and like I don't want to go down that road let's just poke fun and have some have a laugh for a minute you know what I mean like Pizzagate do you know how much I want to talk about Pizzagate mate like I just wanna Example of family histories. Did you know that the accountant that died in prison before squealing on the Clintons about Whitewater is Chelsea's father-in-law? Hectic. Pineapple and ham conspiracy. There's so many, guys, so many. Yeah, the machine is always broken. What's that about, guys? 
That is bananas. I love that so much. I love, I, I see, I love all this shit. Even if it's not true, I love it. What's everyone's favorite conspiracy theory? Because this is day two of our five days. So make it juicy, friends. Let's make it juicy. Thanks, Mish. I appreciate it, Michelle. Hey, sassy, remember something. Ain't no one going to fight in these comment sections. And if you feel like you want to talk about some shit, some, some conspiracy theories, we are all like-minded folk that will be respectful. MK Ultra, right? Who would want a video on that? Because that is something I kind of want to do a video on. But I don't want to be disrespectful because I don't think I could be, like, straight face for an hour. I think uh, Eminem MGK beef was set up by the record company. Amen. I'm pretty sure Jose said that when it first happened. And while we're on a slumber party, let's just have a little bit of my, put my foot in my mouth for a minute. The whole uh, EKC and Charlotte on the web drama makes me sad and I feel really bad. All right, Michelle, good night. I know who killed, I know, like I'm out here, like I'm an FBI agent. I know who killed Tupac. Listen to the song. Babe, what's that song called? By Joyner Lucas, that's got, he talks about Tupac. What is that song where they join it by Joyner Lucas where he talks about Tupac and he's in the church and he's talking? What's oh, it called? Devil's Work. Devil's Work. If you listen to the song Devil's Work. Yeah, apparently he didn't die. He's alive. And there's like there's like a selfie of him. When I look at that selfie, it freaks me out. I like get real freaked out. But listen to that song by Joyner Lucas, Devil's Work, and you'll hear some conspiracies in there about where how, what happened to Tupac. Um, also, another one is um, what was that other one? Just lost me head for a minute. I'll remember in a minute. <clears throat> oh, Steve Jobs. Did you know St apparently Steve Jobs is not dead? He's living in Egypt.
He's living in Egypt, apparently. Thank you so much. Do you know what's so funny, right, is I actually <laughs> sometimes Jose says to me, he's like, are you British? Because sometimes I have more of a, um, I speak more of a, 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 with a British sort of thing with the Queen's English with how I speak. So sometimes I don't come across as very Australian. So sometimes you get your British and you get your Australians. Ah, I was talking about that. Oh, don't don't worry. Don't worry, Sassy Elmo. I, I don't plan on, like, talking about it for ages, but I just kind of feel so bad for the whole situation. Yeah, what about the one where there's um apparently um if I do a video on it, I'll have to say it a bit better than this, but talking about um apparently Aladdin says says um it's wonderful for teenagers to take their clothes off instead of something about cats about stray cats or whatever i know tracy me too honestly me too i've missed it so much and there's one about the lion king where they went to write s F X in the thing, but it comes and looks like S E X. Hey Jennifer, how are you, my love? Do you know how many Disney movies? Um is, is 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 that the phrasing? I'm trying to remember it exactly. But do you know how many Disney movies are actually copied? Hectic. What's the Little Mermaid one? What's the Little Mermaid one? I feel so lost. Yeah, yeah, like subliminal messages and stuff. Yeah, I know. I saw that. Sebastian Schwarzer. Oh, yep, 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 yep. D have you guys heard about the story of the... Um, the story about the original um, woman that played the original Snow White. Now, is it the Mandela effect or the glitch in the Matrix, whether you have thought something was... It's so hard to find out whether it's like, you know, whether you're right or wrong with that. Because there are some of them where I've talked to Jose about it and Jose's like, well, I don't believe that. I've never thought that. Do you know what I mean? Oh, what was I talking about? Oh, the um, the woman that did the original, very, very original um, Snow White. Is that what you're talking about? Hey, Suzanne, so the, the theory today is all things true crime, whatever you want to talk about. We can talk about, you know, uh, we, at the moment we're doing conspiracy theories. So apparently the woman that did that was actually, um, I can't remember the exact figures, number figures, but was actually severely underpaid, severely underpaid, thinking that it was not a full-length movie that she did. And um, it ended up being a full-length film and she was actually cut cut down quite a bit with money because apparently Walt Disney was a sexist and had problem with women, including another time a woman wanted to be a cartoonist with um, 
Disney and was rejected, said no chance. She had no idea it was a full-length feature film until she actually watched it and realised it was a full-length film. In a movie that made Walt Disney millions, she was paid somewhere in the range of $900 to $1,000 and was never compensated for that or anything. Had She thought it was, you know, something very small. She had no idea it was a full-length feature film. I think her name's Adriana, maybe. Cannot remember. Yeah, so apparently there was some information that he was, but then there were also other ones that were anti anti um anti um semite as well yeah so it's very very common i don't think i'll god forgive me but i don't think walt disney was a very good chap if i'm honest i hate saying that <laughs> too nice for me own fucking good mate yeah, so apparently, oh, and do you guys know about, like, um, a lot of TV shows, um, comic books, so on and so forth, two different ones, but first one is um, very much entices or um, entices, suggests, whatever word you want to use, uh, young children to commit suicide. Um, with there's comics the other day I looked up Mickey Mouse to take get a photo for my thumbnail and it was Mickey Mouse hanging himself and I was like oh my god too much for your fucking Thursday morning mate now <clears throat> another one that I was just about to say was um a lot of tv shows and movies actually predict things that happen now right like a lot of things before the Twin Towers were shown in TVs and movies and it was to sit, soften the blow to people, sub, subliminally showing them like, you know about this, you've seen this before. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Mickey Mouse. And you know he wanted to name, he wanted to, um, he actually, Walt Disney wanted to name him Mortimer but his wife said it's not cute enough, it's not nice enough, it sounds too pompous, so she picked Mickey. Disney was an um, it was in the World War One and was scared scared to death of blood and dealt with his fear by shooting out morphine, and that's where his his habits he started his habit. That's crazy. I had no idea. The Simpsons. I'm pretty good about predicting the future. I want to do a video on the Simpsons. Like what they've fucking, you know, the whole coming down the escalator thing will always stay in my mind. But it's also the same with like a lot of um, SpongeBob has a lot of um, underlying suggestions, sexual, self-harm, violent undertones in those episodes to show um, to children. Which is fucking shit. Do you know that um, the um, the what's I'm gonna call it? What's I'm gonna call it? What was I saying? Oh. Sorry, guys. Can you guys not tell that I'm not with it today? Yes, I can do a Simpsons video. What a vibe! Um, have you guys heard about the theories and conspiracy theories when it comes to Monsters, Inc.? A sponge lives under the sea. What kind of crazy shit is that? <laughs> yeah, I'm just out here having a Dory moment. <laughs> Twitch to recruit? What? It's actually a smart idea, though. 
So in Australia, I live in Victoria. So I live at the bottom of Australia. Um, and I live in the country. I live about four hours away from the city, city of Melbourne. <clears throat> but that makes sense, though, Jennifer. You think about it. No, I'm not by the beach. So one side, so Melbourne's here. You've got one side that's to the beach and everything like that. I'm down the bottom which is more towards um, like the outback, really. I don't have a beach anywhere near me, unfortunately. I've got a lot of camping spots, a lot of fishing spots, but no beach. I used to be 20 minutes away from the beach. Now I'm like three to four hours away from a beach, which is kind of weird. Second thought. Who's second thought, guys? I want to watch. Oh, my leg. I haven't lit this cigarette. Oh, it's just making me feel better. Girl, I can't, I can't read most days. So don't worry about your spelling today. I can't read. <clears throat> I might I might have to check him out. Cause that sounds interesting. I'm really trying to find new YouTube channels. <laughs> I love that. Maybe this week I will do um, a Simpsons video as well. Yeah, so so we have quite a few legs here, but ours are more like man-made sort of things. <sighs> Maybe I'm just at a point where I should just tell you guys where I'm from. I think you guys would think it's really pretty here, like where I live. My wrist hurts picking up me coffee. Yeah, politics just seems so stressful to me. Come to Australia. Everyone should come to Australia. Mothman? Who on God's green earth is Mothman? And I want to do ones on um the, like, the... What are they called? It's not the Bermuda Triangle, but there's one in Vermont. I know someone in here, not right now, but in, in my um in my lives before has talked about Vermont, the um the something triangle where like a whole bunch of creepy, crazy banana stuff happens. So guys.
There's book tube drama. What? Tell me about that because that is bananas. <sighs> yeah, because us us Aussies are like we we live in like we're hot here, guys. <laughs> Chupacabra. Tom, that sounds so interesting. See, I don't want to go like heavy hitting stuff because I'm not a heavy hitting person. I want to give everyone a giggle. And I think I do a good job of making people laugh. All right, everyone, pop up your Google and I'm going to tell you where I'm from. And you can Google it and have a look at how beautiful where I am is. Everyone tell me when you're ready. <laughs> There's a lot of like conspiracy theories and stuff and like crazy wacky stuff that happens in El Salvador that I'd really love to do with Jose. Like there's a man that walks around the cemetery in Jose's hometown, walks around the cemetery holding his head. Okay, so I live in a, t in a town. I live in the outskirts of this town, but this is the capital of out where I live. So this is our capital. I'm just going to type it in the chat so you know how to spell it. Yeah, let's just make up our own. Oh, my God, it was so funny, right? I'm, I'm so glad you guys found that funny, by the way, because it was also funny because Charlie Ann, who is one of my wonderful subscribers, I, I adore her. She was like, hang on a second, basically saying, hang on a second, Susan. You don't end up in a vacuum. You end up in the landfill, love. Like you got the wrong idea. And I was like, I am a mess and I love it. What is that man called, babe, no. in, in El Salvador where he walks <coughs> around the cemetery with his head? I don't know the name of it. There's no name? Is there like a... <coughs> I can't remember his name. Was there, is there another one that, like a um, uh, urban legend that you There's have? There's one called El Cipitio. Can you say El Cipitio? Yeah. Yeah. And he like, it's when kids misbehave. He jumps out of the tree. He's like got a gut. And he, Do you like, want to tell him about it? Can you tell him? So there's there's a man that he's what's it called? El Cipitio. El Cipitio, and he's he got a big gut. And when kids misbehave, he um jumps out the trees. Yeah, and he's he's got a little bag full of something. He used to take, and his mum was the. Uh, you've seen it on some of the um the woman that cries. At night. What's what do they call her? I don't know. Because we don't have many of those interesting ones in Australia, but we have, like, there are some in Jose. There's a few there. El Cadejo is another one. It's like a wolf that is the... Well, how do I say it? Cadejo. Cadejo is like a wolf. There's a woman that cries. There's so many of them. Maybe I should get Jose to come on um, one night and we'll do a video about it. We'll talk about stuff from El Salvador. Sleepy Hollow was my favourite movie, by the way. I love that movie. A werewolf, what a vibe. Oh, yeah, his feet were backwards. It's a bit oh, his feet. So He was he was cursed. Oh, hang on. So it says here, I've heard of the legend of <clears throat> El Cipitio like a werewolf or like a banshee. No. No? He was condemned. <clears throat> he was condemned and cursed by a American god. Yep. Latin American god. Um to live forever as a small boy with his feet backwards. 
as a reminder of the twisted and illicit affair of his parents. Oh. Did you guys hear Jose say that? Because I don't want to repeat it if Jose said it. Sto- stories are told that farmers come to their fields and find the footsteps of a boy, but eventually get lost following them because not knowing that Sipidia has backwards feet, they follow the wrong the way. Wrong, wrong <gasps> I got the chills. <clears throat> Sipitia is represented to, as liking to eat ashes, throwing pebbles at beautiful ladies. And Maybe throwing pebbles at me, mate. <laughs> and preferred, <clears throat> preferring to eat a variety of banana called guinea or mahonches, like big, big, big bananas. bananas. Yeah. They're like the, mahonches, like not ripe yet. Oh, okay, yeah. <clears throat> he can also teleport anywhere he wants. Did you guys hear that? I heard it. She threw a curse like a uh, Estral- Estralis. Spooky, spooky. <clears throat> this is the Cadejo one. Cade- Cadejo. Yeah. It's a supernatural character from Central, Central American. I want to see that. Oh. Just that. I'll quickly say it. Yeah, he's going to quickly tell you guys a Salvadorian um, thing. Isn't he beautiful? I'm like the luckiest woman alive. Tell him, baby. There's a good white cadejo and an evil black cadejo. Both are spirits that appear at night to travelers. The white one to protect them from harm during the journey. The black sometimes incarnation of the devil to kill them. The sight of their cadejos are sometimes exchanged according to local tradition. In some places, the black cadejo is seen as the good one and the white cadejo the evil one. They usually appear in the form of a large, up to the size of a cow, shaggy dog with burning red eyes and goat's hooves. My my granddad's seen one of these when he used to be a... <clears throat> he used to look after, like... um. Where they kept the money at, like a coffee plantation. Yeah. And he went out and he saw. He thought it was a, one of the cows. Hmm. But it looked like a, had like a the head of a dog. Yeah. So there's a lot of them, isn't it? Yeah. And is there is there a lot with where Mamina was from, because of the Mayan, the tribes. And yeah, stuff? This, this all come from all the Mayan. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. And Jose's cousin um, was heavily involved in in um, black magic, and because of that, there's a lot Estrellas. of yeah, which yes, Tom. Yeah, there's a lot of um, stories that Jose has as a child that um, that his grandmother has seen and things like that, like from like the house. Like there was one story where that lots of people were banging on the door looking for. I won't say your cousin's name, yeah. Yeah. Looking for <clears throat> Jose's cousin. He was involved with the, like, black magic people. But then he, she was, she, she was hearing all this knocking on the door, like all these people coming looking for his cousin. But then she'd look at the bottom of the door, nothing there. No yeah. feet, no nothing. There would be ones walking around in the backyard. Looking for my cousin yeah yeah looking for jose's cousin so there's so many there in um in central america yeah yeah because all the black magic stuff there's <clears> even <throat> a story that i know you want to go mm. but do you think we should put in a video you want to talk about it now um the man that came to queensland the centauri of the highly that's, I think that's Colombian. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure because my dad works with a lot of Colombians. I don't get along with Colombians. Babe. I don't. Yeah, it's Brazilian, Tom. Oh. Uh.
Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> so there was the um the story. Should we tell them next time? Or you want to tell them? What story? About the <coughs> the man that came to <coughs> Queensland. New York. Oh yeah, he can tell him. Um about he came here with his daughter. You can tell him, yeah. Was it that the one with the fish or not? <laughs> no, that's, that's a different one. one. Mm. My experience is these things travel. I want to go to Brazil. Brazil is actually my favorite soccer team. There's a lot of these these things in like Central South America. I'm guessing as well uh, North America as well. Yeah. Hey, Marlo, how are you? Yeah, Jose's blonde. He's in a process at the moment. He'll be um, full-blown silver, like um, the way that um, Tiago had his – was it Tiago that had his hair like this? Yeah. Yeah, Tiago Silva <clears throat> had his hair like this, a soccer player. Hey, yeah, Marlo. Tom, are you saying, like, these things travel, like, El Cipitio is known to, um, like, teleport travel from – place to place we used to get told as a kid if you don't behave you um he was gonna appear and he was gonna take you with him and there was an actual like um like a cartoon based on him when i was little have you seen that um, yeah mexico with all the dolls no, yeah. i don't think so <clears throat> they got dolls everywhere it's like the island of the dead oh my goodness never heard of that Copper and strawberry highlights. Should I get strawberry highlights? You should do it, Trace. My knees are starting to hurt. Oh. <clears throat> Tom said they're playing. <clears throat> yes, we will come to your hair anytime. Yeah. You should really do it, Trace. So I don't watch any like um, ghost um, shows or anything like like that. I don't watch YouTube channels or anything like that. I've experienced too many hauntings in my life to watch it. Um, I have this. Um, oh yeah, it'll be so hard getting the red out. I've had a lot of ghost stories in my day. I should probably share some of them. But the ghost hunting channels, I did start to watch some of those, but then they started to have a lot of drama within their community and stuff. Do you want me to close this one? No, baby, that's okay. No, baby, it's fine. Can I have a kiss, please? What time does bubble tea open? 12. I'm going to order you one. Bye, guys. Bye, Tom. Bye, everyone. I won't be long, sweetheart. Right. <clears throat> watching the UFC. What time does that finish? Jose's watching the UFC. So I have, like, one story about a haunting that I experienced. And, oh, my God, that scared me forever. Like, I'm still scared of it to this day. So, um, okay, so in uh, 2000, my father passed away. So I was seven years old and my dad had died. So this was January of that year my father passed away. And we had the funeral and everything like that. 
And so we had, obviously, we had the viewing for my father and everyone had this big debate whether I should, like me and my brother, should go into the, so my brother and I were twins uh, and we were six, about to be seven, and everyone had this big debate whether we should go in and say goodbye to our dad. And my mom said that my brother and I could. So we went into the viewing and gave my dad a kiss and everything like that. Now, um, you know, that's, and then I saw what my dad was wearing and he just looked so peaceful and everything like that. Anyway, the next day when I came home, I actually um, had gastro. I was really, really ill, like really, really ill. And I was convinced in my head that I had gotten some disease by my dad, right? Some disease from his body, so on and so forth. So that was me being unreasonable, whatever else. Anyway, so because I was so sick, I was like just, I couldn't sleep. I was so panicked about it. Now, I ended up falling asleep, in my mind, falling asleep. And I woke up and so I was on a bottom bunk. I shared a bunk with my brother. Not very good at telling stories, but here we go. Shared a bunk bed with my twin brother. Now, I was on the bottom bunk. My brother was on the top bunk. I opened my eyes and all I could hear was this crying, like this wailing crying. Mind you, my dad had i never seen my dad cry or anything like that, so I didn't know what that was about. Anyway, I turned and on the door frame was my dad in what he was cremated in, like this on the door frame, crying, wailing, right? And I was so scared. I was frozen, couldn't move. So I closed my eyes and I was like, dad, go away, dad, go away, dad, go away. I opened my eyes, my dad was gone. Now, my sister was 18 at the time. I called out for her, I said, you know, Linda Marie, Linda Marie, Linda Marie. Anyway, so my sister came and got me. And then I went, my sister was sleeping in the bed with my mum. So I went into my mum's room and slept with my sister and my mum. And my sister's like, you're just sick, you're okay, you're fine, just get some rest. I was like, okay. I opened my eyes again. My mum's cupboard where she kept her clothing had no, no, like no door on it. And I said to, I woke my sister up. I said, Linda Marie, daddy sat in the cupboard. And my sister goes, shh, I know he is. So I was like, what the fuck? Anyway, my mum, because my sister and I kept going on about how the cupboard was open and dad was sat on the floor in the cupboard. She ended up buying a door from from Bunnings, which is like our homeware store, and putting the door on there. And I was like, if we're just crazy, why is mum putting a door on there? Now, this was when I was seven. When I was 17, <clears throat> I brought this story up to my mum. And my mum turned around and said to me, she goes, she goes, yes, I used to see your father sitting in there all the time. And I was like, well, why? And mum goes, and I never knew this, mum goes, that's because that's where I put your dad's ashes. So my dad's ashes were sat in that wardrobe. And I didn't know that. And I don't think my sister knew that. But the amount of times we slept in the bed with my mum and see dad sat on the floor in the cupboard. Crazy, right? And every time I've moved into a new house when I was a child, because we moved a lot, I would have to, um, you know, pick my own bedroom, obviously. And every time I moved into a new house, whatever room smelt of cigarettes and beer, which was what my dad smelt like, I would pick that room because I was like, my dad's in here. So there's my story, guys. <laughs> You grew up in a house that was haunted? That's bananas. The house my mum grew up in when she first came to Australia was um, was haunted. True story, Bamley. I experienced similar. Yeah, how crazy is that, right? Here I was thinking I was just going crazy because I was just so sick because I caught something from kissing my father's corpse. And I was just imagining this whole thing because I was so ill. But no, it was actually that. And my mum believes I was really ill because 
I've been like this my whole life. When I'm sad, upset, something's going on, I have a physical reaction to it and I get really, really ill. Example, one kid I knew was playing with a Ouija board and I answered hello. He asked the board its age and it said hello. And it said hello, bye, bud. Anyway, the board would only say hello and the phone rang at the same time and And his mother answered and the voice kept saying his age over and over. Oh, my God, I got the chills. My goodness gracious me. Thanks, Marlo. I appreciate that. Jose and I experienced a lot of hauntings when we first moved into our first apartment when we first got married. Yeah, like I've had so many stories of like situations that like my dad has come about. Like when I was um, when I was in my late teens and I just got my license, I used to drive from one area to another at night, you know, and I'm down the back roads and I would sit in my car and I would manifest what I wanted for myself, which was a man that knew my story, experienced the same sort of things as I, but wanted to grow and change from it and so on and so forth. The whole time I was driving, I felt like someone was sitting in the back seat and I could see them in the rear view mirror. And he was wearing a hat and the hat looked exactly like my dad's hat, right? And I shit you not, I ended up meeting Jose and Jose is exactly what I manifested. How weird is that though? Yeah, Ouija boards are terrifying to me. Like my cousins, when I lived in um, New South Wales with, and I was staying with my cousins, my cousins used to be like, let's do a Ouija board. Let's go talk to Uncle Chris, which was my dad. And I'd be like, are you guys like fucked or what? Like I don't want to talk to him on no Ouija board. Someone got to lie to me. <laughs> so they used to do the Ouija board and I used to go, I used to go sit in the backyard and smoke joints. But they used to actually sell Ouija boards in toy, st toy stores, didn't they? Oh, really? I've never heard of that place. I've never, never heard of that place, Jennifer. Yeah, ghosts are fine. Demons, we don't want that shit. I'm so glad everyone enjoyed my last videos. Who are we saying hi to? Coley, is, Coley, is Miss Vibes in here? Let me put my glasses on at some point. Oh, hey, Miss Vibes. How are you, girl? It was an island in Italy with insane with an insane asylum that ended up shipping lots of plague victims there, supposedly one of the most haunted places on earth. That's crazy. So my mum's Italian. Um my family is from um Cosenza in Calabria. How are you Miss Vibes? How are you girl? Oh, my God, I'm so glad you loved it. I appreciate that so much. Did you guys really like it? What's everyone's thoughts on it? Any, like, feedback and stuff? Because I found that, like, that was so fun. That's why I don't want to do commentary anymore because I, ha I don't have fun with it. Like, it doesn't excite me. Whereas, like, this sort of stuff, like, I really, really enjoy it. Hello, dog. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I know no one wrote a comment about a story they wanted to share. No one. And I'm not even mad about it because everyone was like, you look so beautiful. And I was like, oh, my God, what a vibe. It was like it was very, very, very um, um, 
confidence raising, confidence boosting, just hearing everyone being so nice in the comments. It was beautiful. I love me some fucking, you know, um, some fucking echo chamber, you know. Yes, I definitely prefer these types of discussions over drama stuff. I'm so glad to hear that, Jennifer. But you won't probably you probably won't get that many serious videos from me because I feel like YouTube shouldn't be so serious. Um, it's kind of like where we go to like disconnect from the world. So if we can have a giggle and shit like that, like that's that's kind of my goal, you know, because that's what YouTube's done for me. So I kind of want to keep doing that. <clears throat> Um, you gotta have fun. Conspiracy theory, Disney conspiracy. Love the video. Thank you so much. I tried to think of. Yeah, that's okay. I kind of felt like, and Jose's like, why don't you just do a live for your next day? Um, because it takes the pressure off people. Um, and they can share like their conspiracy theories, their stories. You know, it it it, it makes it a lot easier. It's like, don't put so much pressure on people. And I was like. You're right. <laughs> yeah, Disney has a lot of crazy shit. Uh, thank you so much, Miss Vibes. I appreciate that. My dad became a minister in, in my early adult years. He was pr um, pr practicing participating in an exorcism and had a demonized person read his mail once literally an acne told him what was in his post that's hectic did you guys know that um my family so my father my grandfather my great uncle and two of my uncles are actually um well, were, not anymore, but were members of um, the Freemasons. So I know a lot of stuff about that as well. They were Freemasons. Oh. Yeah, the, 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 the penis in The Little Mermaid. Everyone was talking about that before. That's freaking bananas, mate. I like when YouTubers show a range and post a variety of topic, topic keeps it interesting. Exactly. I kind of want people to come to my channel for me, not for my content, so to speak. Like I can talk about anything and everyone's just like, I love Susan. So that's like kind of what my vibe is at the moment. Ah, my fucking wrist, mate. <laughs> Betty Spaghetti, how are ya? My uncle is a Freemason master in about five generations, Scottish, right? My dad's family is actually Scottish. My father was born in England, so my father was born in Oxford due to um, due to um, snowfall. They couldn't get back. Um, so my um, so my so has anyone heard of uh, the Romani people? Or like gypsies, my big fat gypsy wedding, like those type of folk. That's like what my dad and his family are. So that's what I come, I come back. That's that's my thing. That's my um my heritage. So my I'm first generation Australian. My father's Scottish. Um, yeah. So my big fat gypsy wedding. That's like that's my cousins. That's my you know like and you know what. That show is through and through fact. That is what they're like. That's that's my dad's family. So I'm I'm kind of an out an outward person now since my father passed away. I see some of them sometimes when they do come down to Victoria, but um, I'm actually known as like I'm not a real I'm not a real pikey. I'm not a real you know I'm a gorger. Oh, my wrist. Um, I haven't seen that one, Sassy. Yeah, yeah. So um, 
I'm classed as since my father passed away and I lived in a house. I've lived in a house. I'm yeah, I'm classed as and my father passed away. So what they say is if if you if your father comes from, you know, the the Romani and is a gypsy, pikey, whatever you want to call it, um you are you are one, right? But because my father passed away and I've spent <clears throat> Since my father passed away, I've spent majority of my life living in a house as opposed to living on the on the camps and things like that, like they live. I I've always been classed as more of a black sheep, more of a gorger than anything else. Very interesting history. Very, very, very interesting. You know, like in the in the um in the war, you know, concentration camps and you know things like that weren't just Jewish. It was you know a, a lot of other people were victimized there, including Romani people. <clears throat> very interesting. Very very interesting. I have I have I have very interesting family history. Very very interesting. But I watch my big fat gypsy wedding and I'm just like, oh, I hate you people. And I can say that because I'm one. <laughs> Callista Cat. Callista Cat. I love you, girl. My advice is my advice is parents were survivors. Wow, really? I'll be in and out, my daughter is still awake and goofing off when I'm around. Trouble. Children are trouble. I saw it come up on my notification that you had posted and I was like, do I go live <laughs> or do I watch Callista Cat? <laughs> but I will watch it. I commented on it and I was about to watch it. I was like, but I have to go live because of the time difference. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I feel like I feel like it's gonna be a doozy. I feel like it's gonna be a doozy, girl. And I'm pretty excited to watch it, by the way. Tracy found this out quickly. We moved to where I grew up, and Tracy met some of the older ladies. Awkward for her, gave me a laugh. <laughs> yeah, so I, I have a lot of stories about like that sort of stuff and like I have a lot of interesting family history which is why I kind of like don't judge people like my sister's first husband um about three or four years into their marriage he um he transitioned and um and he wanted to stay with my sister but my sister was feeling a, a sense of grief from that situation because she was losing her husband and gaining a wife. That was very um, overwhelming for my sister. But now um, now she is not my sister but um, ex-partner is now living in Canada with, um, with her partner. Uh, they are a married lesbian couple and they have children. So... It was beautiful to see my husband, my sister's first husband, um, form his true bond and true self. But on the other side, it was very, very upsetting for my sister because for her, it was it was grief. It was a grief. She was losing somebody. Um, so that was a very, very dark time for her. And I think that's why I see both sides. I could see how freeing and how amazing it was for them to come out and transition and be who they wanted to be authentically. But on the other side, I did see how it affected my sister. So I have a lot of like crazy family history. So it's like dysfunction all around me. Oh. <sighs> And I'll tell you another, another, another crazy story. So my nonna, 
my nonna has had two sets of twins, right? So she had um, several sets of twins, um, but my mum is actually an identical twin, but her sister at birth passed away um, because they were born three months prematurely. My nonna's other set of twins were two identical boys. Now listen to this. My nonna in Italy was actually walking in the town with um, one of her twin boys and someone someone actually, well, a woman came up to my nonna and said, pointed to my uncle, um, he was very, very young, you know, six, seven months old, and she said to him, she said to her about him, she goes, he is too beautiful. That is an, an angel on earth. That is a walking angel. He had the most beautiful blue eyes, you know, porcelain skin, blonde hair. It was nothing she'd ever experienced with her other children, right? And the woman came up and said, he's an angel on earth. He's an angel on earth. He doesn't belong here. And 12 hours later, <clears throat> my uncle Mario passed away at the age of six, seven months old. So that was spooky. Very, very, very sad, but very, very, very spooky. There's a lot of stories like that. Greatest sign I've ever heard regarding how ones live their life. You haven't walked a, haven't walked a foot in my shoes to even know what they're going through. Absolutely. There's so much, so much, so, so, so much that people go through that no one ever talks about. You know, half the shit I've been through, I've like forgotten. <laughs> I'm one of those very unhealthy people that like to put things to the bottom. Look at the positive and put the rest at the bottom. I never bring it up again. <laughs> I'm wondering if tomorrow I should drop an episode on the 10, the 10 craziest um, Simpsons um, predictions. How would everyone feel about that? Instead of what I was going to do, which was a true crime case here in Australia. Oh, my leg. I was going to do a true crime case on actually someone that I actually knew in my life. I knew this man and he went on to um, be a double murderer. Do you both? ¿Por qué no los dos? Oh, guys, hang on. Give me one, one little second. My love, did you take my lighter? I won't be able to do both because i got to get to the kids and everything like that, but they are ones that will come out. They will come out. I don't want to spend too much time on the tubes. We'll spend more time with Jose because I love him. Jennifer, if you can Google, if you can Google um, Project Air, I think you'd really enjoy some of that stuff. Because it, it it it'll it'll show you a different like a whole different bunch of shit. Like no one's fucking perfect. I'm still dramatic, mate. I'm still dramatic. Someone commented on my on my creep show art video this morning, right? I woke up at 4 a.m. Check me YouTube. And this person goes, oh, Susan, your channel is so awful. It needs so much work. And I replied, I was like, oh, Rhonda, I don't give a fuck. So trust me, I can still be reactionary and upset about things. Don't stress. We're all different. Okay. But Project Air is very, very interesting for people to look into. Yeah, they were like, oh, oh, Susan or oh, Bambi, your channel, you have you have nothing, you're talking about nothing, um, your channel just sucks or something. And I was like, oh, Rhonda, I don't give a fuck, brah. Live your best life, mate, but I don't give a shit. Um, hey, Stace, how are you? Yeah, Project Air. 
Project Air. I'm learning a lot of things from Project Air at the moment. Fucking Rhonda strikes again. Fuck out of here, Rhonda. Rhonda's the new Karen, mate. Watch, watch, watch Rhonda secretly be in here because Rhonda secretly likes me. I love you, Rhonda. I'm having so much fun with you guys. It's been such a good live. <coughs> I'm the Jerry Seinfeld of YouTube. But I'm actually going to do that Simpsons one. That's, that like seems really, 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 really cool and really, really fun. Are you fucking serious? Jennifer, why do I sound so aggressive? I'm not aggressive. But that's crazy. Oh, my God. The BTK killer, there was an actual roast of him on the fucking um, Morbid podcast. So funny. So, so, so funny. But Dennis Rader, oh, my God. He's like one of those serial killers, like, um, you can't sit with us. Like, he was like the the nerd, the loser of true crime killers. But that is so creepy. Yeah, it feels like I've been a while, I've been a while since I've gone live. You have to tell me more about that because that's crazy. John Wayne Gacy's house, sweet baby Christmas. When I met Tracy, one of the cops that re-signed the case, trying resigned, resigned trying to chase a raider was my boss. What a vibe. I think if I was to do like proper true crime cases, honestly, it would be a 45-minute roast. On the killer. And someone be up in the comments like, they're still human. I don't give a fuck. That's so crazy. It was so funny. I used to be on the phone. I used to be on I used to be on the phone. Once I was on the phone to um Apple because Devante spent like a hundred dollars on my Apple account, right? On the phone, this guy's telling me that he was from where would he say he was from? Can't remember the name, but he lived the way um fucking away from like on the way past where what's his name grew up? Dharma, right? Dharma lived, right? And I was on the phone too. I was like, tell me more, tell me more. And he was trying to get me off the phone. I'm like, I will give you a gold star review if you talk to me for an hour about your experience living near. And he's like, I went to the same high school as Jeffrey Dharma. I'm like, tell me more, mate. Let me get a pen and paper. Let me interview you. He wanted me off the phone so bad. He literally gave me $100 back to get me off the phone. I was like, no, I'm here. We're here. <clears throat> it was the one that got away from him. I couldn't imagine how that would be. That would send me nuts, honestly. Honestly. But God bless them for trying to do it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I could not. Oh, my God, Callista Cat. What a vibe. We should do it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, Jennifer. I think he's a weirdo. I think he's a dumbass too. Imagine thinking the cops would tell you the truth, mate. What a dumbass. <sighs> what a dumbass. If I send you a floppy disk, can you trace me? Like they're going to tell you the truth. What a fool. What a dumbass. Dennis Rader tried to be, like, in the cool kids of, of true crime. No. You're a nerd. 
watch someone take me video out of context now and say I'm making fun of nerds. I'm not. My stepdaughter used to have Jessica Ridgeway. Jessica Ridgeway, 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 Ridgeway. I don't want to be wrong about who that is. But is that what's his name's daughter? Or is that a case where that girl was actually burnt? So is that Gary Ridgeway's daughter? Daughter or wife? Or is that, yeah, shut up, Susan. <laughs> that was so funny, right? I said to Jose once because Devante um, wets the bed, right? Not anymore, but, you know. Um, and I said to Jose, I said, let's keep an eye on him. <laughs> he might be a serial killer. And Jose says to me, he goes, oh, babe, if the kids end up murdering someone, or whatever, would you cover it up? And I said, no. And he said, oh, yeah, maybe because it's the right thing to do. And I said, fucking no, mate. No. <laughs> if I was to cover up their murder, I couldn't write a book and be famous. <laughs> I'm so behind on this convo video, but, Bammy, you should check out Sloan Bella. I love her. I love her, love her. Her video on when she did that video on the Delphi murders and those young girls where she was talking about a teacher or something like that, I just found that so intriguing. I was like in everyone's comment sections all over YouTube recommending her to everybody about 12 months ago. I love her. Bye, Callista Cat. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye, Callista Cat. Yeah, I really, really love her. I have not watched her in a while, but I do love her to bits. Bye, Marlo. Mwah. I love you. Would love to do one about weird things that serial killers were interested in, like the Night Stalker and ACDC, or what cartoon they couldn't stop watching, or what restaurant they couldn't pass on. That's really good. I would. I'd love to do that. Yeah, I really, really enjoy her content. I really, really enjoy her content. But I'm, like, so sick and tired. Like, I'm, don't mind me. I'm not trying to be an asshole or an asshat, you know what I mean? But I'm so sick and tired of seeing all these conspiracy videos and all these sort of, like, videos, and they're so serious. Like, I feel tired after. I kind of want to come in and be like, here's fucking 15 conspiracy theories and I'm just going to fucking, you know, giggle me ass off. We're off to go hiking. Have a great day, night, guys. Have fun. Take water and charge your phone before you go, all right? Stay safe. Once this hits two hours, I'm going to get going so I can start my day and um, hang out with the kids and Jose and stuff. So what are some other things people want to know before I head off? Give me a list of videos you just want me to do and I'll do them. God, I was thinking about doing five, like once a month, do five days of true crime and slumber time.
Bye, Tom. <sighs> yeah, I know. It happens every time. But me, my video will stay up. My comment section will be up. I like the stories from Australia harder for me to find the good ones apart from 60 minutes. So have you guys heard about the ghost um the um the ghost train one, the Luna Park ghost train fire. That one's a bit bananas. Who are the skeleton boys? All I know about is the frog boys. Serial killers aren't funny, but your one line is everything. I know, I'm, so, I'm, I'm actually pretty good at those. Huh? <laughs> I have never heard of the Skeleton Boys. Yeah, I want to do more like me Disney ones. More of me Disney ones. You have no idea how much. Just putting the camera on and sitting in front of it actually helps with my anxiety levels. Like I feel so good afterwards. It's amazing. I love it so much. So in 1970 there was um, a group of, I think it was four or five children and one one older adult that went on the ghost train um, at Luna Park in um, Sydney. And there ended up being a fire inside of the Luna Park ride and it killed them. Um, one survivor, the rest died. Now, before they went to before they went to the um, before this family that come from Outback, New South Wales, before they went to the park, they were stopped somewhere. And it was like a like a tram stop or a train stop or something. And what happened was there was a photo taken of one of the young boys that died. And there was a man that um that took someone took a photo of this man that was wearing a demon um a, a, a demon head, right? And he stood next to the boy and took a photo, right? And everyone is talking about this photo, saying that it was like a demonic sort of thing that happened to this. Like it was a, you know, one of those creepy things that happened. But, and it's still unsolved to this day. But there was a, lately there was a um, ABC investigation that come out and it was a lot of the, um, a lot of people coming out and talking about it, stating that they were on the ride before and smelt the smell of gasoline. So it was planned, right? And a lot of people have said that it's Abe, cannot remember Abe's name. So hang on, give me one second. Cannot remember his surname, right? But Abe, Abe, I'm going to call him Abe, what a fool. But anyway, Abe was a man that was very well connected uh, in the underworld, right? The underworld out like of Australia. And he was someone that scared me, little boy. Um, that was um, wanted to buy the park. So he wanted to have ownership of the park. So it is said by, by staff and witnesses that have now come forward now that they saw a group of bikies at the park believing that this was actually nothing to do with an accident or anything to do with demonic, demon, um, paranormal aspect of it all. It was actually him who had planned this in order to get a better deal on the park. But a lot of people are coming forward now, so they're reopening the investigation of the Luna Park uh, ghost train fire. They were three boys 
from Montessori, Miss Michigan. The dad says he gave them away, but I think they were killed. Oh, I do remember that one. I do remember that one. There was some sort of situation where there was um, the parents were separating. And that's when the father come out and was talking about his, how his wife was a, I don't know if she was a registered sex offender or something, but she had an inappropriate relationship a number of years before um, with, a, with, a, with a student. Uh, with a student, and he says he gave them away. But a lot of people say, you told a lot of lies, you've done a lot of things, we believe that something has happened to them. Yeah, so so that, um, that case now. So I'm going to actually, this is one article I have on it. I'm going to pop it in the chat for you guys. There's a multitude of things, but... Um, the people that have come forward and and one of the people one of the survivors has actually dealt with um, a lot of survivors guilt um, but for some reason a lot of people didn't come forward with this information for a number of years but once this investigation this documentary had come out everyone's come out and spoken about a multitude of things such as no one had brought up before the group of bikies that they saw at the park that day. No one had talked about the um, the um, what's them call it? The smell of strong smell of gasoline they smelt throughout the ride beforehand, and it was so sad because one of the mothers of I think she lost two or three children on that ride that day, but she had she was going to go on the ride with with them. But she was craving ice cream. This woman never ate ice cream. She was not an ice cream eater. She was craving ice cream and decided not to go on the ghost train with them. But everyone held on a lot to, hang on, I'm going to post a photo, Luna Park Ghost Fire, Abe Saffron. So his name was Abe Saffron. Now I'm going to post this image of the photo that everyone is going on about. So this happened on June 9, 1979. It was business as usual at a, a Sydney's Luna Park. Now, um, there was one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there was a, a group of children and one older man. Now, if you go on this article that I'm about to send you guys, the first thing, listen to this. They, She said that um, we asked Damien and Craig what ride they would like to go on again. Jenny Godson told Woman's Day Australia. They chose to go on the ghost train, little did I know. At this point, Godson, which is their mother, Jenny, was overcome with a craving of ice cream, something she never normally ate. So she told John and the boys to wait for her and she would meet up with them shortly. <clears throat> and she said that they asked, so it says, for some reason I suddenly felt the need for ice cream. Asking, I asked the others if they wanted one and they all said no. I asked them to wait for me, but when I turned around, they were all gone. She said, I don't know why they didn't wait for me as we'd been on every single ride together that night. This haunts me to this day. Something, something spiritual took over, divine intervention. For some reason, I was not meant to die that night. So that is incredibly, incredibly sad. So I'm going to send you guys this link. You're happy to uh, be, be, you know, happy to read the rest of it um, another time. But you can also... But you can also 
just look at the the um the image the first image that pops up this is what what was something that everyone really really talked about was this image of this random man in this outfit that come up to one of the the young boys and someone took a photo in that instance so take a look at that guys Yeah, I would have wanted to be with my children too in that moment, but I feel as though there is something in the element that being a survivor of this tragedy could be you are the best person to advocate for it. Best, like, advocation, like, comes from the woman that lost her children that day, which is incredibly, incredibly sad. But it's so weird because I don't eat ice cream. I've never been a sweets person until after I had my third my third child. So to hear that, it just was just like, oh, my gut. You know what I mean? And the fact that they had gone on every ride together was a bit, you know, a bit crazy to me. So another, so there's a lot of different theories, but a man by the name of Martin Sharp, who is an Australian artist who repainted the iconic Luna Pace, Luna Park face in the mid seventies, never believed the fire was an accident. He started collecting documents and files, and later befriended Holman and Godson. When inquiry after inquiry brought no answers, the three friends became determined to solve the mystery them themselves. When Sharp passed away in 2013, his research has now been passed on to um, Caro Hanna and the team behind Exposed. So the team behind Exposed. So everything that these people have done over the years, who were who were affected by this tragedy and then Martin who was the artist who did the the face of Luna Park they wanted to get justice and once he passed away all of the research he'd done for a multitude of years were passed on to expose which is now um a documentary series on ABC in Australia so this has all just just come about again opened up again on the um in during March, so in March, and now that it's been pushed for the government to go to go forth. The woman that died in the Cheshire Far murders was our school nurse. The dad was the only survivor, and now he does tons of act. Um, advocacy in their names here. Wasn't her time to go? Absolutely. So her the survivor and this man that painted the Luna Park face is are the ones who are essentially bringing this one to the forefront again now, having people that were witnesses on the day come forward now. So it is sad that she's lived many, many years without her children. That's incredibly sad, but I feel like there was a reason. She's an advocate. She's piecing all these puzzles together to get justice for her children. Now, as sad as that is, it's also a beautiful thing because who better to be their advocate than their mother? Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> That's the thing. So when it when it, when it comes to that image, I've been really looking into that image. I obviously I'm I'm Australian. I've lived in Sydney. I've you know I I'm an Aussie. That mascot. I've never seen a mascot like that in my lifetime. In my lifetime. And I and I'm trying to like find out who took the image. And, I, and, and I'm not entirely sure. Maybe someone can tell me more about it, but I'm, I'm just like, who took that image and why? And it just seems so bizarre that this child was in an image with that. Like it just so, like, bizarre. It, it is so sad. It is so sad. It is so sad. And a mother will fight harder than anyone else. And, you know, Yeah, like it comes from the 70s. 
you know, they, 1979. But at the same time, I find it very, 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 very bizarre. And what also I find very, very, very bizarre is, let me go down a little further here and go to what I was mentioning. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that, like that sort of mascot. So the ghost train fire killed six children and one adult. So what they were saying is, right, is what they first said at the beginning was they had inadequate firefighting measures and low staff causing the fire to completely destroy the riot. But then we have the people coming forward, don't we? Now listen to this. Multiple witness, multiple witnesses to the deadly 1979 ghost fire have come forward to reveal that they saw and heard a, sus a suspicious group of males at Luna Park and and smelt the smell of kerosene and accelerant. But instead of following up on many leads, the New South Wales police officer in charge, Detective Inspector Doug Knight, dismissed it all. He called the search for the suspects and swiftly he called off the search for the suspects and swiftly concluded the fire was caused by an electronical fault. So how can you say an electronical fault? When you're smelling kerosene. Now, ABC's exposed investigation has unearthed seven, seven overlapping accounts of youths or bikies seen by staff and patrons at the theme park that night with key witnesses speaking publicly for the first time in 2021. Some have told ABC that they felt intimidated and hounded by the New South Wales police officer in charge of the original statements about what they had heard and saw. That comes back to Abe Saffron, who had a lot of money and a lot of power. Does that make sense? Their sights, their sightings include a group of beard bikies wearing leather jacket and knee-high knee-high boots who rode the ghost train shortly before the fire began, as well as a group of males talking about using kerosene and matches to start on the ride to, to start the fire. Why do I have 75 ads on this fucking article, mate? Don't be out here telling me shit, Uncle Vic. I'm going to come back to you guys. I wish I knew how to split screen. Those look like creeper, creepy Easter bunny pics, but the thing is, is the horn. Have you seen? Yeah. It's the whole horn thing. It kind of looks like um, a creepy, I don't know if this comes across as me being ignorant, but it comes across as a very creepy um, thing for, um, um, I don't know what to call them, uh, American Indian is that is that you're inappropriate I'm, I'm not sure what the right terminology is but yeah yeah like 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 ritual sort of um, um, you know like it just doesn't look like any mascot that I'd I have ever seen in Australia. And it could just be a coincidence, but it just makes no fucking sense to me in my brain. I feel as though it was a setup. Uh, you know, the the whole idea of Abe Saffron. Do you guys want to know who Abe Saffron is?
So his name was Abraham Gilbert Saffron. He was an Australian nightclub owner and property developer who was one of the major figures in organized crime in the latter half of the 20th century. And um, he died in 2006. So he was he was basically called the king of the king of King's Cross. Now I've spoken about King's Cross before. If you want a brief thing of King's Cross, uh, that's that's like our fucking our, our strip, our um our you know nightlife sort of thing. So from the mid-1940s to the mid-1970s, Saffron was the king of King's Cross, running vir virtually every brothel strip club and bar along Darlinghurst Road. In the three dec decades that Saffron prowled the Sydney streets, there were few criminal activities that, the man, th that dubbed the man Mr Sin but was alleged to be involved, right? But his main criminal in endeavours, which helped him amass a $25 million fortune, include brothels, arson, insurance fraud, bribing police, liquor offences, blackmail and extortion. And there's been a, a list of men that have died who were involved in a lot of those questionable things um, in King's Cross. Saffron, who died of complications of a leg infection, was a mafia-style crime figure with a so strong sense of family, trust, and betrayal. Just as Saffron's business life flaunted more so flaunted the more the social mores of the time, his private life was very what was simulta simultaneously unconventional. He had a multitude of mistresses and children there was actually a situation with his son alan who actually lives in la now who was very upset that his half sister who came from a mistress not a wife was going to walk away with four million dollars after her father's death whereas Allen was only going to walk away with 500000 stating that he was the only son and he was the only legitimate child and should have walked away with more. So there's a, yeah, I'm going to come back to you guys now. Sorry. So Abe, Abe's son, Alan, is now in his late 50s, early 60s, um, and he lives in L.A. now. And I think I could be wrong, don't quote me, but I think he's had the same sort of life as his father. Yeah, King's, King's Cross was hectic. My dad spent a lot of time out there when he was younger, and my dad said it was pretty crazy in King's Cross. Yeah, what a jerk, right? And it does say that, like, um, Abe was involved in a lot of police bribing and things like that, and he wanted more money. And he he wanted to get the park at a good price. And what better way to do that than to have this fucking outrageous fire where people are like, I'm not going there if we can't trust you know, the mechanics of these rides, he would quite possibly get a good deal on the park, I guess, which is incredibly sad and selfish if you think about it. 
But I'm so glad I got to share that story with you guys. That was one of the cases that I've wanted to talk about for a while. Mm. Because Luna Park is basically like our, you know, it's, it's not as big and as crazy. Like we have a we have a lunar park in Melbourne and we have a lunar park in Sydney, but it's basically our thing, our um, our Disney World, our Disneyland here in Australia. And um, as a kid, I spent many, many, many times at Luna Park. Um, you know, like we, we have our theme parks on the Gold Coast and things like that, like in Brisbane, Queensland, um, that are fucking famous, you know, they're, they're like the best of the best, you know, uh, if you come to Australia, that's where you go. But yeah, for these two states, Luna Park was the place to be. Go down that rabbit hole, girl, because I have been down it time and time and time again. So if you want, I will obviously keep this live up, but I'll be checking comments if you guys want to talk about it. And he had, throughout the 60s and 70s, he had a multitude of uh, New South Wales police officers and investigators on his payroll. That makes a lot of sense. So don't worry about 60 minutes, right? 60 minutes is trash. Look into... um, Anything from ABC um, and there's a new series that's just come out and they talk about the Jaden Lesky case. Um, they talk about um, obviously the ghost fire. They talk about a multitude of things um, and it's actually very accessible from the ABC News Now website app. So, uh uh-huh, Bell, I actually um, know the father of Bell's son. I'm actually friends with his, his partner now and they have joint custody of her son. She is bananas, like bananas. So I, I, I know the family personally. Well, the the father's side personally. And he has 50, 50 custody. Do you have to invite people to your Discord? Because when I've logged in, everything looks blocked or private. You know, I actually have been checking out. Yeah, she she's she's Ethiopian. She won't. She was like trying to really fight vaccinating her son, the way that she treats her son, the things that he became scared of and uncomfortable with. I I don't understand. But rest assured, he has a wonderful father. Um, so my Discord, I go and check my Discord all the time, and, and I never have any messages there. So I'm wondering if there's some sort of situation happening with my Discord. Because I'm like, where y'all at? <laughs> If I've ever had any invites on my Discord, I do allow everyone in. So, um, yeah. 
But guys, I have loved chatting with you so much for this day two of our slumber party. I have had so much fun and I really hope that you guys liked me. I have it set up for voice chat. Oh my God, I'm so silly, but I will go and fix it. Um, I, I will go fix that. But in the general room. I'll have to go and fix that. But I'm going to head off because I've been on here for two hours and 15 minutes and it is Sunday morning here and I just want to hang out with the kids and hang out with Jose and, um, yeah, kind of feel a bit sick today but she'll be right. She'll be right, the old Aussie way. So I want everyone to have a beautiful night, beautiful day and um, if you haven't liked the video, please like it. Feel free to comment down below when the video goes up and I love you all so much and yeah if you guys feel like you really like my content and my channel feel free to share my um share my channel share my channel around I don't have any social media so if you guys do and feel like sharing go right ahead so yeah have a beautiful day guys Mwah! I love you all so much bye guys <laughs>